going to be my business that I want to start. It's workwear and high-end fashion. Um, we're going to be doing everything from safety gear, durable workwear, to stylish and innovative fashion for everyday living and working. So I find that when people in trades come home, they, when they go out on the weekend or whatever, they're still throwing on their work jacket or stuff like that. So I'm trying to make fashionable workwear for everyday life. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing that I want to do within the company is uh, doing custom like custom garments, so with custom fabrics, notions, attachments, and other specifics for distinct standards of jobs, whether it be firefighting, military space, mining, construction, demolition, any sort of trade job. Um, could be in the sewers, <laughs> even. Um, the target market would be like men and women who are into arts and trades because it's not only workwear but high fashion mixed in. Um, these are just some technical drawings. This would just be like raglan tops, some cargo pants with like tool loops on them so you could hang your hammer in your pants and hang your screwdrivers in your pants. Uh, the the knees would either be like different materials because I find like people are always down on their knees hammering nails into the wood and stuff like that. It could either be out of different uh, fabrics like duck canvas or even a fire retardant one or 3M if you need reflective like for mining you know, underground or working at night. Uh, then I have a five year plan is year one is trying to secure a loan or grant to get a warehouse and equipment to start manufacturing the clothing. I want to manufacture as much as I can in Canada. That's why I want a warehouse and equipment. Um, and then I would also create an online store. Uh, year two would be build a storefront in the warehouse. So I have this experience with my dad when he started his company. We he bought a warehouse and he was doing all his work in the back but then built a wall in the front and put up a little storefront that people could come in and see what sort of locks he offers and stuff like that. Um, so I thought that would be a kind of cool idea because the warehouse kind of shows the industrial part of it and if you just put up a wall it still is industrial you don't and it's all the work wear. Um, so and then year three, I would want to invest into some systems that can track fabric, fabric scraps, extra fabrics, and also maybe the quality of fabric and notions. So I'm getting higher quality stuff, making sure that it's not going to fall apart on me. Um, as well as garments made and sold. So I don't want uh, I want to keep track of all that, so I know what's selling, knows what's not selling. Um, my year four, I would hopefully be trying to be well on my way to paying off the loan if I could not acquire a grant. Um, and then year five, I want to be a uh, self-sustaining company where I can not have to work a second job or multiple other jobs. <laughs> um, and then the inspiration behind Cold Front. So my mother and my dad, they're both, they don't, both work in trades, but my mom was never afraid to get her hands dirty, either cutting wood, helping build one of the houses that we lived in, or shoveling every winter. She's always the one shoveling and like makes me get up and shovel and help her like cut wood and everything. So, um, and my father always pushed me to work hard. He built the second house I lived in with my grandpa and my uncle, and then went on to start his own locksmithing and security company where I ended up working for a bit till he was soft on me, till he said he was soft on me and fired me. <laughs> uh, then I had to find a job elsewhere. And as my only experience was doing labor work for my dad, I could only find labor jobs. I mean, I did work at co-op for a bit, but I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> um, then, I couldn't really find any other jobs in labor, and or I could only find jobs in labor, and that's where I began noticing the clothing in labor. Um, I learned about different trades and how hard it was to find cool and stylish clothing in those trades. 
I saw a few brands that struck my eye, um, but until I found Carhartt, um, I didn't know, like, I wasn't excited about any fashion companies other than skateboard brands, like stuff like that when I was younger, until I found Carhartt and these like workwear brands that still looked cool. Um, and like I, and from there, I kind of realized that like you could still look cool while being covered in sawdust, dirt, or snow. <laughs> um, and then a few years later, I found out about a pre um, designer named Karen Preston who does, who made a collection called Uniform, which was based around what the New York City workers wore. So it was the Department of Sanitation, um, the actual police officers, the fire department, and multiple other city workers where they all had specific jobs that they needed specific types of clothing for. So he did, a, collection called Uniform based around that, and that's where I draw a lot of my inspiration, is seeing that a high fashion brand can do this for work wear. Um, and then from there, from there on, I kind of decided, like, I know my uniform, which was like a Carhartt jacket, Carhartt snow pants, and like some Levi jeans and a white tee, and I thought about how I could try and make that more stylish. Um, so there's my business values. Uh, my business would value hard work, sustainability, family, quality work, arts, and trades because that's my values so I would like to carry that over into my business. Uh, some strengths and weaknesses of the company would be quality workwear and accessories, safety certified CE and CSA approved. Um, customs slash customer collaboration. So this is one thing that I really want to focus on was the customer collaborations, being able to work with either a, a company or just the single consumer that just needs a good set of gear that they're working in. And either it be like boots, pants, and a jacket. Um, and then the a strength would be it's high end fashion, and it's not just about the workwear. It's about the the quality and how it's made, and how um, how it also looks because we like how stuff looks. <laughs> uh, the weaknesses would be there's tons of workwear brands with good reputation: Carhartt, Helly Hansen, Columbia, Kodiak, Cat, all those construction type brands. Um, and then obviously companies like Canadian Tire Marks where they sell all of these brands and there's, it's going to be hard for one location like mine if I were to only have one location and I'm only selling my stuff, people may look and be like, oh, but I could get this, this, and this, and this. All different brands from a different store. So that's a weakness. Opportunities would be having workwear and high-end fashion in the same store, a mix of art and work, because I really couldn't find anywhere else that did this. Um, and then obvious, the same threats are Marks, Canadian Tire, other workwear brands. Uh, the locations, I find it's hard to find a good location for this right now, as there's a, not a big focus on people like there's still people wanting to do trade, but if I'm more and more people are wanting to be artists and go into art and other things like that, so or just work in an office where they don't need workwear and they need more business stuff, which I'll send them to Misha for. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's mainly the location and the fact that there's less and less people wanting to do trades. <coughs> Um, and those symbols there are just some safety symbols. So this this symbol here would stand. That uh, means you have a steel toe. You also have uh, I think it was 176,000 ohms of protection through the sole of your boot. So that's just some different um, safety symbols. And then the sustainable aspects of cold front. 
So I want the system to track fabrics, scraps, and extra fabrics. I'm obviously going to try my best to do all the markings so that there's no wasted fabric. Um, I, I did a project a few weeks back on seamless designs. Found out about like seam, seamless designers and or one seam designs or really few seams and it's not with sewing, it's more you like melt them together. So that's, I kind of want to incorporate that into my designs because I feel like that could be really cool and sustainable and stylish. Um, and then using environmentally friendly fabrics and chemicals, so stuff that's biodegradable, not gonna eat away at the earth. <laughs> Um, and then recycle or upcycle previous lines for new uses. So my old lines that maybe didn't sell, take a look at the things that didn't sell with them and try and change that or recycle, upcycle, just depends. And then the innovative aspect. So there's the customer collaboration. So the jackets would all be able to have like interchangeable pieces, either it be 3M if you need all that sort of stuff, the fabrics, etc. Um, and then I also want to be able to do not just work where with customers, like working with customers who create custom pieces, um, either it be for a company or a single person. Um, so we can customize either jackets, pants, maybe even boots, if I can figure out, I want to learn how to obviously construct shoes and boots and stuff and uh, get them safety certified so that they're properly and proper and able to use in the workplace because I know when I got my job last summer I couldn't have a I had to buy a boot that had this green triangle this blue square and this white square on it and that's the only way I could work there is if I had a boot with those on there and that is pretty much it. These are my sources. Any questions? I like how you're drawing inspiration from like your heritage and like your family. Like that really brings brings people in. Yeah. Uh, I uh, what was just like the whole thing for me is I love clothing, but all of the jobs I've ever worked were labor intensive. So I was like, why? I should try and bring those two things that I love together. So I did. It's very unique, um, but I feel like if, if one person, even like yourself, loves art and you know that kind of stuff, there's got to be other people out there too, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's just making sure that you find the right place to be and where they're doing the research around that. The the real <clears throat> the location was difficult to think of because I think honestly my hometown would do well because. There's mining up there. Everyone has a job in the mines. I have multiple friends that work there, and they're all talking about how often they go through boots or shirts and stuff like that. And uh, then I thought about BC because I know about the logging industry over there, and I have family over there, and know that this is kind of like a heavily trade area, like over up in Nelson and stuff like that. But I don't know if I could just do one location for this mm -hmm. or if I should do multiple locations and just um, have, heavy online have or have a heavy online presence. And or like pop-up stores? Yeah, like. I think starting in Yellow Knife would be smart because you can get grants, right? Yes. That it's much yeah. easier to get grants to start a company up there than to go somewhere else because mm -hmm. they want you to come home. Right? Yes. Um, and so you could you could get a grant to start there and um, and then use your friends as as um, your test market because with something like this you're going to want to you're going to want to test it out to see how far to go because yes like you said there's a lot of really established companies already they don't really care about style per se uh, some of them are caring a little bit more but usually they're just strictly safety and yeah. comfort and that kind of stuff and that's what they research right so when you go to AG, um, AGM is it AGM what is it. Uh, AGM. Yeah, AGM, yeah. yeah. So when you go to AGM and the testing factory next to it, you've been there, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, that's what they're concerned about. They're, that, and yeah. So that's taken care of, and so you would use that de data and all that kind of yeah. stuff for that. But what you're looking at is um, is a combination of, of 
of, yes, all the safety gear, but making it attractive and so that mm -hmm. um, it's stylish as well so they can't just wear it to the, the bar afterwards. So yeah, exactly. you would want to have a, I think starting in your own home would be really clever, mm -hmm. getting the grants, you have an established group of people that you know that you can do your test marketing on. Once you have established that, then you can start doing an online presence. And then, like Margo suggested, maybe pop-up stores, then go in to different places. Once you're more established and you have a good idea of what's going on, and you know that works for this group, so what about this group, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fascinating niche because, I mean, who would have ever thought that Carhartt would have a fashion following? And yeah. you see yeah. guys in rap mm -hmm. videos yeah. wearing Carhartt mm -hmm. utility well, workwear yeah. or the high-vis vests. That's right. Or, right. And the same with, like, whoever came up with that bush camel. Well, it's not fashion as we would call it, but it took off and it was utilitarian for hunting. Yeah. Real but you see it everywhere. Is everyone yeah. wants So real it's tree. that thing that needs to be cool. I can see your line of utility workwear styled for the runway as just fashion, but it's, yeah. it's utility workwear. Yeah. And I can really see it going as just fashion, but it's it's workwear. Yeah. But it's right? fashion. Yeah. It, it's not out of the realm of. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it was reminders. Yeah. yeah. And then became fashionable. Um, you can have Kanye longer. West yeah. 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 That's yeah. yeah. I look at it's like very easy. And you'll have influencers wearing it, and it takes off. Right. There was yeah. the cool thing about Carhartt that struck me was they have. At first, when I first heard about Carhartt, it was workwear, and I knew it from either my uncles or mm -hmm. my, or my dad or anyone that was in trades. They would have a piece of Carhartt at least, mm -hmm. and. Um, then I found out, I think last year I found out that they have a skateboard team and they also have something called Carhartt Work in Progress, which is like $800 like shirts, like just like normal t-shirts like and stuff like that where I'm like really nice stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it, it just like it's a, when I said the, the designers and my inspiration is, is Carhartt and mm -hmm. Aaron Preston and also, this one new guy named Samuel Ross, he, but he doesn't really do workwear. It's more like utilitarian mm -hmm. sport because he does like Nike mm -hmm. sports and like utilitarian type stuff. Like, we need to find you a kick bum internship. Yeah.